Paul Mancano. Paul, a lot of Orioles fans are here tonight. A ton. It helps that we're sitting right in front of the dugout where a ton of Orioles fans are behind the away dugout. But, yeah, yeah they have come out in full force. Absolutely. Now, now you had a chance earlier. I, I think one of the nicer guys in that clubhouse is Tyler Nevin. He's one of those guys you want good things to happen to on the field, but off the field, he had something good happen to him recently as well. Yeah, his dad, Phil Nevin, became the manager of the Angels out in L.A. after Joe Madden uh, ended his stay there. So his father getting a big promotion, not exactly how Tyler Nevin right. or his dad expected it, he said in the clubhouse pregame, but he's very happy for him, obviously. Now, these two teams meet in a few weeks, July 7th through July 10th, and Tyler said that his dad has a very good knowledge of his swing and where the right. holes are in his <laughs> swing, as you might imagine. So he said, well, now he's going to use a lot of that information against me, but that's part of the game. That's, got, you have to be able to accept that. I got to think it's going to be an advantage for a guy like Tyler. His dad was a one of one, a draft pick out of uh, Cal State Fullerton. Yeah. And a tremendous baseball player, did it for a long time. So that's got to be an advantage on both sides as a player and now someone who's been in the game long enough on the coaching side to give that kind of knowledge to him as well. Absolutely, and he was a uh, coach with the New York Yankees before when Tyler made his debut last season. Yeah. So he has been a baseball lifer. So for Tyler to grow up in a baseball family like that and to learn from a coach every single day as he was growing up and playing the game has definitely helped him. Thanksgiving meals have to be very interesting. Austin DeVolf <laughs> as well, he's with the big league club right now. What can we expect from him? Nothing tonight, most likely. He's probably going to be used tomorrow if during this series out of the bullpen, probably a couple innings out of the bullpen tomorrow. But he was used as a starter a lot in Washington right. before he was kind of converted to a reliever this year, and he struggled a little bit. He's just hoping to get back to the success he had at the beginning of the 2021 season where he was locating his pitches a little bit better. And the Orioles are certainly hoping for that as well because he's a little bit of a veteran guy and can provide some depth out of the bullpen, even though there's really not a spot for him in the rotation. How's it for you? You're covering these guys from all access from a minor league level now seeing them come to the bigs. It's got to be a little excited and proud for you, too, to see these guys grow up a little bit. Oh, absolutely. It, just the maturity that you see from a lot of these guys. I think of Ryan McKenna as one guy in particular yeah. who talked to him a couple years ago back in Bowie, and he was not the same guy that he is now, both physically and emotionally and maturity-wise. So I think it's awesome to see these guys kind of grow up, and we're seeing all of these youngsters yeah. come through the clubhouse right now with Mount Castle, Hayes, Mullins, there's just the list goes on and on. Now, one of the guys you saw go from a minor league with, who was a prospect to now a legitimate major league. In fact, he was a American League Rookie of the Year candidate last year, and, and that's Ryan Mountcastle. Tell us a little bit about him. Yeah, we spoke before the game uh, about his relationship with Trey Mancini in particular because Mancini has sort of been like the dad of this clubhouse. Even though he's just 30 years old, he's a little bit on the older side compared to the rest of this Orioles clubhouse. And those two have been going back and forth in terms of trading home runs. They have both been pretty hot as of late. And before today's game, I asked Ryan Mountcastle about taking out some frustration that he has experienced recently on a recent swing on a home run at Camden Yards. I was putting together some some good at bats, you know, especially a couple of days before that, and uh, nothing just seemed to fall. It seemed like there's 20, you know, fielders out there, and guys are making diving plays and stuff. And it's it's part of the game, but uh, yeah, I was a little frustrated and sort of took it out on on that ball there. How do you get to a pitch that is that high and that kind of outside of your range? Uh, I don't know. Sometimes it's you know better to be lucky than good. So <laughs> <laughs> no, it was. Good pitch. I just, you know, got on top of it and uh, was, was looking for a fastball there and, and, you know, got the barrel to it. Fair enough. So with Trey Mancini, there's been a lot of talk about the friendship that you guys have had, him kind of being an older brother. Does it help to have him playing the same position and being able to kind of learn things defensively, especially considering you didn't come up as a first baseman? Yeah, no, Trey's a man. He, he helps me out with, with everything. And uh, for him to be, you know, having the year he's having right now, I'm, I'm so happy for him. And, um, yeah, hopefully we can get it. We can both get it rolling, and uh, you know, get some wins here. And uh, but yeah, I've I've learned a lot from him, and um, like I said, I'm super happy he's doing well. He talked about wanting to be there for when this team kind of turns around, and now he's starting to see the fruits of that. Does he kind of feel like the elder statesman right now with all yeah. these young guys coming up? For sure. I mean, he's he's uh, you know one of the more experienced guys on the team, and has uh, been through a lot, a lot of a lot of ups and downs with this team, and uh, he's. He's uh, handled it really well, and uh, yeah, you just pick his brain whenever I can. It's it's always you know great advice. 
he's obviously not up there in terms of years, but cons comparatively, like, does he feel kind of like the dad of yeah. the team? <laughs> a little bit, you know, him and, you know, Chirinos and, and Rugi, they, they're all, you know, a little bit older than, I guess, us young guys. So, um, yeah, I mean, they're, they're great to be around and uh, definitely, you know, great influence on us young guys. Feels like they've caught hold of some of the trends that you guys have started, but it feels like you guys are the driving force behind yeah. some of those trends. Would you say that's yeah. they kind of adopt those, or do they know what you're talking about when you're starting a lot of those trends? Yeah, I would, I would say yeah, Trey and uh, Trinos, not as, probably not as much. They don't like the Call of Duty airstrike thing, but uh, I know I know Rugi is a big Call of Duty guy, so he 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 understands it. But uh, yeah, those guys we had to sort of teach him what it was about. <laughs> awesome. Well, it's good to see both of you guys having the kind of years that you're having. Yeah. Appreciate the time. Thank you. Now, Paul, something that that uh, Ryan Mountcastle said there: better be lucky than good. I, I don't know whether that's the all shucks mentality of his being a young guy. But that's kind of him, his personality. Absolutely. And in that case, he was very much good, I would say. Not lucky. He mashed a ball over the fence, a pitch that was very high and outside. He has incredible talent. But he does have that kind of humility. And I think a lot of it comes from veterans in this clubhouse like Trey, who we know is about as humble as it comes. Yeah, and, you know, he's talked about the, the trends that you said. Talk about some of those trends that you're talking about. Yeah, he's been able to get to a lot more pitches uh, and, and some some things, it, not just on the field, but in the clubhouse as well, because we see some of the celebrations that carry right. over onto the field, whether it's the Call of Duty thing that they do after they celebrate a hit or a home run. And this clubhouse is young, it's vivacious, and Trey Mancini is just 30 years old, and yet he feels like one of the older guys on this team. But Trey has that humility. He has the ability to take a step back and understand when he needs to step up and be the leader and when he needs to sit back and listen to them and let them kind of run the show. I don't know if you picked this up, but I, I sort of feel like you have the veterans who come to this clubhouse and they add experience, and you have the young kids who also in the clubhouse keep the veterans young, yeah. keep the veterans uh, uh, on their toes, so to speak. Yeah, and you can tell how Mike Elias targets certain veterans because we've seen with Rugnet Odor, we've seen with Robinson Chirinos, Jordan Lyles, who's starting tonight, veterans who are bringing something very specific right. to the Orioles. All of these guys bring something to the table that maybe these young guys have to learn from. They have to pick up and have the ability to adapt their games in that way. So. Mike Elias has been very careful about the kinds of veterans that he's brought in. And so far, those three guys that I mentioned have been huge additions to the Orioles clubhouse. Paul, thank you very much. You've been a huge addition to the show.